All right, so this is match day 26 picks. Oh, my bad. Match day 28 picks of the week. And what other game to start off with than New York Red Bulls versus it's like Inter Miami? They know what we've been talking about. <laughs> so New York Red Bulls at home plus 135 as the favorites, Inter Miami plus 175 as the road dogs, with the draw being a plus two. 50. I'm going draw here. I think with the rotations and Inter Miami being tired, it's going to be a draw. New York is known for being a pesky pressing team that knows how to press and go at you, but they are not clinical in front of net. Um, they've been very bad with their chances on goal and have not been able to put things away. So I can see a draw here, and I think a draw will be a victory for Miami. Yeah, it looks like what the odds, uh, the odds makers think um, that Messi is will not start because if he was starting those yeah. odds would not look like that. Um, I don't think we need to go into too much detail about the last five of Miami. They have won their last five, although yeah. some of those games would have been a draw, I guess, uh, if it was the league. Um, but New York, on the other hand, it is worth looking at their last five. Um, they've been doing pretty good. Um, four two win against New England, and then in the League's Cup two one against Atlético de San Luis, a one nil victory against their crosstown rivals NYCFC, a uh, loss to the Philadelphia Union. Uh, that one was in penalties one one, but they lost in penalties, and then they beat DC United at home. So both teams are actually pretty hot right now, but I think Messi will start. I go Miami. All right. Yeah, I'm going draw here. So next game, we got FC Cincinnati versus New York City. FC Cincinnati minus 120. New York City FC plus 300 with the draw being a plus 270. New York City FC did bring back Maxi Morales after being gone in South America this past uh, this past year, but he's now back in New York City FC. But I think New York City FC has too many problems. FC Cincinnati, obviously, Supporter Shield leaders right now, best team in the league at the moment, just went through battle, uh, getting knocked out of the U.S. Open Cup. I think they're going all in on the Supporter Shield race, and they're at home. Give me FC Cincinnati. Yeah, I think Cincinnati, I mean, they gave Miami the toughest test yet, and we thought that wouldn't be possible after – the Nashville game. Um, so these uh, New York City, they have a loss, loss, win, loss, loss, not doing so well. Whereas Cincinnati, they have a win, a win, a loss, a loss, and a loss, although two of those losses in penalties. All right. Now we got so I, yeah, I, I, and I And I'm going Cincinnati. I don't know if I made that clear. Oh, yeah, Cincinnati. Okay, yeah, you didn't. Orlando City SC versus St. Louis. Orlando at home, minus 135. St. Louis, plus 340, with the draw being a plus 280. I'm actually going to go with the odds makers here. I like Orlando at home. I think they're starting to play better as well, even though St. Yeah. Louis has been dominating, and then St. Louis absolutely obliterated um, Austin this past weekend, but Austin is just a shit show right now, so I'm going Orlando. Here. I agree. Uh, Orlando, they've definitely been playing a lot better lately. Um, uh, they're they're really on paper they're not that bad of a team so it's it's not surprising that they're starting to click. Um, with uh, Atlanta or with Orlando City they they have a win a win a win a loss to Miami and then a win. Um, so they've been playing very well. With St. Louis they've lost one, although that was pre Inter Miami <laughs> a win, uh, a loss a loss and then a win against Austin, which was a great game if you guys have not seen it. But I'm also yeah, they, going Orlando on that one. All right, next game, Montreal versus New England Revolution. Montreal plus 110 at home. New England Revolution plus 210 at away. With the draw being a plus 250. Um, I'm actually going to go draw here. Um, New England is obviously one of the top teams in the East, but they are on the road. And I think Montreal has actually been playing a little better, especially at home. Um, I think some of the additions, like I said, of Bryce Duke and uh, Popku and Ariel Lassiter has really kind of helped turn that team around. So I'm going to go draw here. 
I'm actually going to go New England. I agree. Uh, Montreal have been playing a little better, but I don't know. I think New England, they it's about time for them to wake up. It is a way, but uh, they, they have been a great team. They're third in Supporters Shield. Um, so with the Montreal, they have a loss, a win, a win, a loss, a win. New England, a win, loss, win, loss, and loss. Although... Uh, two of those most recent losses and penalties. I'm going to go New England. All right. Now we got DC United versus Philadelphia Union. DC United plus 140 with Philadelphia Union plus 185 away with the draw being a plus 230. I'm going Philly here. Um, I know Oddsmakers got DC at home, but I got Philly here. Philly is just the better team. They're going to want to redeem themselves after what happened and obviously they're going to be pushing for the i think they're also in the supporter shield race so that's something they got to work towards uh but yeah i got i got uh philly here i agree philly uh it was just it wasn't like them uh against miami they're much better than that their last five even shows it with a win a win a win a loss to miami and then a win um claiming third place in the league's cup new uh DC uh, have lost one, lost, lost, lost. They've been struggling a bit. Um, Philadelphia are the better team, and I think they win despite being away. All right. Now we got Atlanta United FC plus 105 at home versus Nashville SC plus 230 away with the draw being a plus 250. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Nashville win. I think Atlanta has been struggling. They're continuing to struggle. They're on a downward spiral. Um, And Nashville has been playing very well. And I think, like I said, they went through the gauntlet of playing some of the best teams on the continent. So I'm going Nashville Hill. Going Nashville here, even though they're on yeah, the road. I agree. I think usually on paper, if you're looking at these two teams, I think this is one of those games where you could see it being a draw. But Atlanta have been struggling. Uh they they did win their most recent game against Seattle, but other than that, they've lost the other four. Uh, whereas Nashville, they've been looking great, except for a loss to uh, to Miami. All right, so, so we'll go for Nashville there. Charlotte FC versus Los Angeles FC. Charlotte FC as the home dog at plus one oh one eighty five with LAFC plus one thirty as the road favorite with the draw being a plus two fifty. I'm going LAFC on the win here. I think this is pretty easy. Charlotte is a very bad team, and Los Angeles obviously one of the best teams on the continent. Oh, totally agree here. I mean, Charlotte, you know, they haven't been playing terrible. Uh, they have a win, a win, a win, a win and uh, got destroyed by Inter-Miami. Uh, LAFC have a draw, a win, a win, a loss to Monterey, and then a win. Um, to LAFC, they're just there's So they lost to team. the highest... They, they lost to pretty much the most talented team in CONCACAF, is Monterey, <laughs> yeah. on paper. One yeah. of the highest payrolls in the, in the CONCACAF. All right, Columbus Crew versus Toronto FC. Columbus Crew plus 290 at home as heavy favorites. Toronto plus 600 away with the draw being a plus 400. Toronto struggles continue to happen. It's terrible. They literally have no one else on that team except Bernadeschi and Signe. That's literally all they have on that team. They don't even have a manager right now. So, and Columbus Crew, meanwhile, has been playing out of their mind. Their last game, I know they did beat the shit out of Cincinnati. Um, which is obviously the best team in MLS right yeah, now, record wise. So, I'm oh, Columbus, I totally yeah, I agree with easy. you. Toronto winless in their last five, uh, whereas Columbus three wins, two losses in their last five, with one of those Toronto, losses being penalties. Toronto pre Messi was the highest spending team in the league, and now they're the worst team, genuinely the worst team. I know we have the worst record, but Toronto they is are the, the worst, worst team. team. Yeah, they're the worst team, and that's and saying I something never because guessed. I I actually thought Colorado was the worst team 
which I they're thought close. Toronto was going to be one of the best teams in the league. Yeah, it's I crazy. Mean, going into the season, they had a lot of talent on there, and then they lost it due to injury, or they traded him away. Then they bought Bradley, not knowing what to do. It was just a shit show. So I'm curious to see how their off season looks like, especially if the, oh, the rumors yeah. of uh, John Hurden, the Canadian national team coach, going over there. But now, uh, sporting Kansas eight. City. Well, oh, that's. Really, it says seven thirty on the or no, it's on the bottom. So the eight thirty games, yeah, let's go eight thirty. Mm. Sporting Moving Kansas on. City versus San Jose Earthquakes. Sporting KC plus one minus one fifty. San Jose Earthquakes plus three eighty. With the draw being a plus two ninety. Um, I'm actually going to go draw here. I think Sporting KC is starting to play a little better, uh, but San Jose is actually in the playoff race, so we got a little bit of Western Conference matchup, but um. Like I said, Casey's been playing better at home. They had a really, really rough start in the beginning of the season, but they're starting to pick it up. So I'm going to go San Jose here. I'm going to go draw here. You're going to go draw. I actually agree with you. I'm going to go draw. Um, It just, I don't know why, but it just seems like, I don't think both these teams have really, um, they're not not high scoring teams. That's for sure. So like a 1-1 is definitely on the cards. Got a Texas Derby going on here. FC Dallas versus Austin FC. FC Dallas plus 100. Austin FC plus 250 with a draw being a plus 250. This is not a very good game. So Dallas, yes, I believe they're in the playoff race. But they're, they're it's a team that's been squeezing by victories. Meanwhile, Austin, on the other hand, has just been... Uh, who I don't know what happened to that team because this is a team that pretty much stayed together from last year. Has kept the same yeah, coach, it's very, the same it was, players. It's the shock so of the year for sure. I don't know what's going on with Austin. Like I said, they were one of the top teams in the West. They qualified for the Champions League. I don't I don't know what's happening, especially this is the same team. But I think I'm going to have to go Dallas here. Austin just, until Austin can prove otherwise that they, I mean, Austin lost to a Haitian team that hadn't played in two years. I mean, until, until they can prove me wrong, otherwise I'm going to go Dallas here, especially at home. Yeah, I'm going to go Dallas as well. They're, they're pretty strong at home. They gave... Um, Messi's Miami a good run for their money. Um, Austin have been struggling. I think that's a pretty easy pick. All right. So the game that was not talked about as much as the other semifinal in the U.S. Open Cup Mm. was Real Salt Lake versus Houston. So they're going back and going up against each other again three days later. But this time, Real Salt Lake is hosting. And Real Salt Lake is minus 130 with Houston Dynamo being a plus 310 with the draw, with the draw being a plus 280. I actually really like Real Salt Lake at home. Um, Houston is sketchy on the road, which makes me feel good about Inter-Miami in the U.S. Open Cup. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Real Salt Lake in regular season play has been playing very well. They climbed up, I believe, in fourth place in the West. So they've been doing very well. And um, yeah, I'm going Real Salt Lake here. I think that's a good pick. Um, it's probably the safer pick, but I'm I'm gonna go uh, for a wild one here and say draw. All right. Now we got LA Galaxy versus Chicago Fire. LA Galaxy plus two ten. Chicago Fire plus two eighty. With a draw being at plus two eighty. LA Galaxy actually made some decent moves in the summer transfer window um it's a team that's slowly getting better chicago fire is the complete opposite it's a team that's been stagnant and it's still stagnant even though they're paying their dp so much money but it shows that you need to diversify the income a little bit but that salary a little bit but i'm going la galaxy at home here i think it's an easy win yeah i agree um both teams been having a rough season but uh I think LA are the team that's just slightly more in form at the moment. Um, So I think LA Galaxy is a good pick. All right. Now let's go. Got a little bit of a Cascadia rivalry going on. Portland Timbers versus Vancouver Whitecaps. Portland Timbers plus 110. Vancouver Whitecaps plus 200 with the draw being a plus 260. Um, I feel like this is a pretty evenly matched. They're both kind of middle of the table Western Conference teams. Um, I'm going to go draw here because I, I want to say I like Vancouver more. I think Vancouver has shown more this season. Um, but Portland at home is a tough place to play. So I'm going to go draw here. Yeah, it's it's definitely a tough place to play, but I feel like every time we bring that up, it ends up uh, going south. So I think I'm gonna have to pick Vancouver here for for this one. 
All right. And then this is the final game of match day 28. And it's going to be a Sunday game, a standalone game, which thank God I need. We need more of these. We need Friday. I've been calling for Friday night footy. Oh my gosh. I'd be, you cannot tell me that's not an awesome idea. What was, Friday your, night what was, footy. Your, what was your pick again? I had draw. Perfect. Um, but uh, we got Minnesota United FC plus 115 at home. Seattle Sounders plus 220 away with the draw being a plus 230. I'm actually going to go draw here. I think Minnesota can be a pretty good team, especially with uh, Timu Puko. Uh, I think it's Puki. Timu Puki. Puki. Yeah. Yeah. The Notting- uh, Norwich City uh, longtime striker. Um, he's been playing pretty well and been partnering really well with Manuel. Uh, Reynoso, who's coming back from injury and has been pretty well coming back from injury. So, um, and Minnesota making it to the quarterfinals of the League's Cup. So, I'm gonna go draw here. Um, I think Seattle still has enough class to to stay in this game and keep a draw. I'm actually gonna go Minnesota. Um, I think Seattle have been struggling uh, recently. I think they um, losing to a struggling Atlanta. We're losing Adam a little bit. What was that? So I would go Minnesota. Okay, there you go. You're back now. So you got Minnesota. All right, cool. And those are our picks of the week. We will come back next week and see how we perform. There is a set of Wednesday games, so we're not probably going to be covering that one. Um, so our next predictions are going to be probably match day 30, um, that weekend. So stay tuned fools.